Welcome to episode number 51. I'm CJ Wellerman. Thank you for joining us. In this week's episode, we call on the international community to halt the Indian government's effort to demolish Muslim-owned homes and businesses as part of its plan to repetition India as a Hindu-only state. But first, a quick reminder to click on the subscribe button below so you never miss a single episode. Now let's get into it. The Indian government's strategy to commit genocide against 200 million Muslims has many facets. From hate speech that encourages street-level violence, to discriminatory laws that deny Muslims equal rights, to making life so unbearable for the religious minority that they'll be left with no other choice but to self-deport to Pakistan or Bangladesh. Since the start of Ramadan, we have seen a new tactic evolve. One that collectively punishes Muslims for resisting and defending themselves against Hindu extremists who carry out terrorist attacks against them and their mosques, businesses and homes. Despite such measures being in violation of Indian and international law. Now controversy in Madhya Pradesh where a day after there were stone throwing on Ram Navami processions and uh, there were widespread communal clashes in the Kargaon uh, town of the state. The local authorities on Monday started bulldozing illegal houses and properties of those Prima Facie found to be involved in the violence. So within 24 hours they identified those who were involved and even started destroying their properties and this has sparked a massive uh, controversy with many asking is this a bulldozing of justice. You see, the bulldozer is not just a machine, it's also a symbol. It's a symbol of an ideology, a political strategy, it is a well-organized political project, says this Indian journalist. This is the first time we are witnessing the open targeting of Muslims by Hindu for radicalized mods, law enforcement agencies and civic institutions working together. This heinous tactic has been rolled into states ruled by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's party, including Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and Gujarat, leaving hundreds of Muslim families suddenly homeless. The Hindu extremist government of Gujarat state also followed Madhya Pradesh in bulldozing homes and properties belonging to Muslims. The targeted anti-Muslim demolitions began soon after a clash during Ram Navmi. But the fascist Indian regime is not only demolishing Muslim-owned homes, but also Muslim-owned businesses. And even in the capital Delhi, where Hindu nationalists are waging an economic war against Muslim street vendors. Watch this Muslim business owner burst into tears as bulldozers demolish her shop. <laughs> this effort to destroy the Muslim population's economic livelihood is helped along by the majority Hindu population who are pledging to boycott Muslim-owned businesses across the country. <laughs> And when hundreds of Hindu Fagoons failed to destroy a mosque in Delhi last week, the Indian government stepped in and completed the criminal task while leaving the Hindu temple next door untouched. ये जहांगीरपुरी की वो जामा मस्जिद है जहां से हिंसा शुरू हुई थी और आप देख सकते हैं कि ये देखिए यहां पर मस्जिद का गेट तोड़ दिया गया है और ये पूरी मस्जिद है देखिए मस्जिद Alarmingly the Indian government and its Hindu national supporters have devised a highly effective but unquestionably evil strategy to achieve this aim The execution of this strategy includes five steps Step 1 local Hindu nationalist leader calls for the rape and murder of local Muslims or for Islam to be wiped from the planet. Step 2. Thousands of Hindu nationalists show up in Muslim neighborhoods brandishing swords and other weapons while chanting genocidal slogans. Step 3. Stone pelt Muslims and their properties like these Hindu extremists did in Delhi last week. <laughs> Step 4. When Muslims defend themselves, call the police saying Hindus are under attack. 
The police arrive, but only to arrest Muslims and or participate in the violence against them. Police in Madhya Pradesh attacked several Muslims in Khargon, including two elderly unarmed Muslim men. Other disturbing police brutality videos have surfaced, showing police officers grabbing hold of young Muslim men by the neck, encouraged by other cops to beat them further. In step five, Hindu nationalist government issues order to demolish Muslim-owned homes and businesses. But individual Muslim homeowners and business owners are not served a notice. Bulldozers just turn up and demolish their homes and shops. Watch this Muslim woman in Kargoni explain what happened to her. This is the textbook definition of ethnic cleansing, but the Indian fascist regime is not only bulldozing homes, but the constitution, the rule of law, the country's social fabric, and the present and future of India. Home demolitions have always been a hallmark of genocide, as witnessed in Kashmir, Bosnia, Chechnya, and Palestine. And now they are being used as a genocidal tactic against Muslims across India, including Rohingya genocide survivors and other Muslim migrants in Assam, as reported here recently by Vice. This is the only home that Gayasuddin Ahmed has ever lived in. His parents built it 40 years ago, but now, with the help of his own children, he has to tear it down because the police say he's squatting on state land. What further proof does the international community need before it recognizes a Muslim genocide is now underway in India? It must act now before means more are made homeless stateless and forcibly disappeared. These are the gravest of times. Anyway, that's my time for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to this channel and help spread the word of your friends and family on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we kindly ask that you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of the show at patreon.com slash CJ We can't produce, sustain, or grow this show without your help. And we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, Good day, good morning, good night, wherever you are, and stay blessed.